today, we're going to take some time just to uh, tie all these things together. And uh, we want to share some practical insights on, uh, uh, that'll be helpful, uh, just to uh, tie things together and then see uh, how we can use this as we depend on the guidance of, of the Lord uh, for various things in our lives. And uh, this actually takes focus, right? Right now, as I, as I talk to you, you're listening, you're focusing your attention on me. Uh, it's not that there, are, there aren't other voices or other noises uh, around. If you just pause for a minute and, and listen, you, you probably hear the, the traffic going on Museum Road. Maybe some other sounds around. But all those are drowned out when you are focusing uh, on my voice, right? And, and that's the same thing that we need to do as well uh, with God. As we listen to him, we, we drown out the other noises and, and voices that are there. And, and we focus our attention onto him. So, so it takes a little bit of tuning. Because God is speaking to us, but are we tuning in to listen to him? And this takes humility. We, we need to walk humbly before our God, knowing that he has something for us. He has the best way for us. And if we could just tap in to that, we could walk uh, in his will. We could walk with power. We could walk with in the way that Jesus wants us to. Uh, so that, uh, that takes uh, um, humility and, and tuning in to, to, to what the Lord is saying. So uh, just looking at some practical ways in, in which, uh, some insights in, uh, in which uh, God is dealing with us. Firstly, God speaks to us in more ways than one. You know, uh, when you look at Job 33, Verse 14 to 16. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when, when deep sleep falls on men while slumbering on their beds, there he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. So God can speak in, in many ways, just not one. He can speak in, 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 a, in, a, in a multiple multiplicity of ways. And he can use any combination to, to speak to us. But the, the key word there in that verse is perceive. Do we perceive? That, that word in Hebrew, it, it's, uh, which, which is uh, said as sure, it means to go around in inspection, to go checking, to... Uh, 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 to survey, to look. So it's, it's actually focusing. It's actually looking at what God is speaking to us. And especially, you know, the, the way that's written there in, uh, in dreams, you know, if you don't write down your dream right when you woke up, it's gone. You know, and, and God could be using that way to speak to you. So if, if you get a dream from him, make sure you, you record it as soon as possible. Um, I'm someone who just doesn't get any dreams. <laughs> um, but uh, my wife does a lot. <laughs> Maybe I'm that deep in sleep. <laughs> so that's one of the ways. Uh, I, I, I mean, as I said, God can talk in, in, in a variety of ways. And, and it's important for us to perceive that. Uh, the, the next thing is to, to test and validate the leading or what we are hearing from God. And uh, we looked at these 11 ways in which God uh, deals with us. He speaks to us. Uh, you know, we, we are not limiting how God can speak. Maybe he can speak uh, beyond these 11 ways as well because God is God. He can use any way to speak to you. But what we want to emphasize uh, is that this is what we, we are accustomed to, the, the ways we've known that God has spoken, and especially the first three ways 
um, that's the word, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, and the voice of the Spirit. These three ways are the primary ways in which God speaks to us. Um, and we say primary because that's, these are reliable. You can trust them. And if you know that you have a word from him, you can depend on that word. Uh, and this is how uh, you know, we can walk in confidence when we know that you, that you have that word. But the remaining eight uh, um, uh, ways that we looked at, they would need validation. They would, be, they would need to be verified. They would need to be tested. Uh, and uh, one of the uh, validations is through the word and through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. So uh, if you receive uh, these uh, 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 through the other eight ways, when you receive a word, you know that this needs to be validated. Um, you know, I was talking to uh, a colleague of mine, um, probably a, a year or so uh, back. He was a Hindu colleague, uh, and uh, we were talking about God. And I, I was telling him that uh, God speaks to me. He was very surprised. Really? You know, people are waiting to to hear from God. And I and I told him that. Uh, the primary way that God speaks to us is through his word, uh, through the Bible. And he was so excited, he immediately went online and, and ordered a Bible. And, uh, you know, I didn't even have to give it to him. He, he just went online and ordered it. You know, there are people who are hungry for the word. They, they, they are hungry to, to hear from God. And this is something that uh, we need to be mindful about. You know, uh, sometimes we, we hesitate in telling people, thinking, oh, uh, maybe, uh, you know, they'll, they won't like it. But people are hungry to listen from God. And we've got to tell them about the Lord, the God who speaks. And this uh, is so good. Uh, uh, you know, God can use um, us uh, in this manner. Um, so when you receive guidance through the, the other ways, the secondary ways, uh, 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 you know, maybe it's through a dream or through a prophetic word, obviously that, that needs to be tested. So, you know, it's not something that we use immediately and uh, you know, make a decision and, and run off because we, we, we just received that word. So we ask ourselves two simple questions. Firstly, is what I feel led to is that aligned with the word of God? And um, if, if, if there's no specific uh, scripture uh, regarding that, is it at least aligned to the nature of God? For example, if you, if you feel like I should divorce, it's definitely against the nature of God. Amen? Amen? God says I hate divorce. And... and so we know uh, uh, from the word, uh, you know, there are, there are things that, uh, uh, that can validate and that can confirm the, the thoughts that are coming in our, in our heart, and our mind. Uh, and so the first question that we ask is, is it aligned to the word of God or the nature of God? And the second question uh, is, what is the Holy Spirit witnessing or speaking to me about this? You know, that's, that's, uh, these are the two questions. First is the word. And second is, what is the Holy Spirit speaking to me regarding this matter? Um, you know, if, uh, uh, you, can, you can check if you have the peace and the approval of the Holy Spirit in this matter. And if, if I can tell you a, a story from, from uh, college... Um, uh, a cousin of mine uh, prophesied that I would marry a certain girl. Uh, nothing wrong with the girl, uh, but uh, I just didn't feel led. Um, you know, I just uh, didn't feel the peace, and it was certainly not the time. Um, so this, uh, I didn't know this then, but thankfully, the Lord led me. You know, uh, there's nothing wrong with the person, but God needs to validate things that have come from, uh, you know, um, 
maybe a prof prophetic word or, or any one of those eight ways uh, that the, the, the last eight ways that we looked at. Um, so yeah. one of the uh, uh, ways in which we, we, t uh, we, we get a confirmation is when there are two or three witnesses. So I'm reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1. This will be the third time I'm coming to you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. And uh, the Apostle Paul is actually quoting from the Old Testament. He's actually uh, quoting from Deuteronomy 19 and verse 15. Um, and and uh, this is talking about addressing matters at, at Corinth. Uh, uh, so this is a truth that can apply to validating and testing the guidance that we receive from God. So, if your decision is based on a specific instruction um, from the word, you know, you have confidence and you can use that. Um, in that situation, you can proceed and, and, and go ahead with what, uh, what's been spoken. But let's say, uh, take an example of <coughs> uh, a prophetic word uh, that was given to you. Uh, let's say uh, it's a directive word um, saying that you would move to a particular town or a particular city uh, and uh, you would be doing a, a business uh, in that. Maybe, maybe it's a prophetic word that somebody's given you. Don't pack your bags immediately, all right? That, uh, you know, as you receive that word, you thank God for that word that was uh, given to you and you need to go and, and test that. You need to, that, that word needs to be validated. Uh, so you make a note of it and, and proceed to test that word. Um, every prophecy must be tested. If you, uh, that's said in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 20 and 21. Every word from a prophet that needs to be tested. Uh, so uh, this is important um, as we... Uh, you know, receive words uh, of prophecy uh, uh, in our lives. Uh, also, we need to know the timing. Uh, maybe it's for a particular time, a particular uh, um, you know, season in your life. So we need to know a little more specific details about every word or um, message that comes to us through various uh, means, each of those eight last means uh, that we spoke about. And uh, we, we would expect God to speak uh, uh, through a quickened word as you place this before him. You know, so this needs to be validated. And we're all learning. We know that uh, uh, we can make mistakes on the way uh, as we go through this. Uh, uh, looking at John chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Yet, by, yet they will by no means follow a stranger but will flee from him for they do not know the voice of strangers. Verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Amen. So, as we learn to walk with God, as we journey, our, uh, you know, the, sometimes the challenge is, if you've heard correctly, have we heard the voice of God? Uh, and uh, we need to distinguish between the voice of our shepherd from the voices, from probably a voice that's coming out of our, out of our flesh, or maybe... Uh, you know, someone, uh, um, some, some, some direction from the world, or even the devil. Okay, and and the devil is so crafty; he can use uh, his voice. He makes his voice sound so close to the Father's voice, and it's important for us to to distinguish between that, uh, his voice, and and the voices of the world and the voices of our flesh, from the voice of our Father. And the way we distinguish is by being familiar, by being intimate with the voice of the Father. 
by knowing the nature of God, by knowing the word of God, by knowing that this is how God is and this is how God has led me. This is how God speaks to me by being so close to, to how God is, uh, has, has already dealt with you. Having that intimate relationship, having that, uh, that walk with God uh, leads us and guides us. And, and as the sheep is familiar with the shepherd's voice and, and can recognize the voice of a stranger, that's how we need to, we need to acquaint ourselves with the voice of the savior, the voice of the shepherd. And so that takes some time, just dwelling in the word, just keep, keep reading, keep talking to him even as you read, um, because this book uh, is, is unlocked for people who seek. That's how this word is built. You know, it's, it's not made uh, just for people who, who want to challenge it, but it's for people who are seeking. As you seek, the Lord speaks from this word. And, and that's what uh, uh, our response or, or, or our stance uh, should be. So say this out. I am his sheep. Uh, come on, a little more stronger. <laughs> yeah, say this out. I'm a sheep. I hear his voice. I know his voice. I follow him. Once more, I am his sheep, I hear his voice, I know his voice, I follow him. Now that's what verse 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And so it's a good declaration. You know, whenever you're confused, whenever you, you think you're hearing other voices, Say this verse over yourself. My sheep hear my voice. So this is a learning process. You know, we make mistakes. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, we, we get it wrong. Sometimes we, uh, uh, we took, we listened to our own self directing us. That can happen. But as we continue to walk, uh, as we continue to persevere, the shepherd will guide us. The shepherd will lead us as we continue to listen and focus our attention to his voices. So acknowledge your mistakes and, and get back on course. So we get back on course, looking at uh, Psalms 18 and verse 36. You enlarged my path under me, so my feet did not slip. And that phrase, enlarged my path, is God clearing the way. So it's, it's possible to walk with God uh, in, in such a way that you can experience God clearing the way. You know, when, when, you, when God enlarges the path, it's, think of it like a thick forest and there's no path and that path has to be cleared. And the word of God and, and the leading from, from your shepherd will, will open up that path. He will enlarge a path for you. It's possible to walk with God and experience that. Um, and the person who wrote this, David, is someone who, who actually made a lot of mistakes uh, as he went, went along uh, with God. He's, uh, he, he, he is a person who inquired so much of the Lord, but there were times when he made mistakes. And uh, you look at uh, Psalms 25, verse 4. David says, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Verse 15, my, my eyes are ever towards the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. So when David found his, his feet stuck in a net, trapped, you know, these are the words that he declares or he cries out to the Lord, that, that the Lord will, will, will lead him. He'll pluck my feet out of the net. You know, God is bigger than, than all our mistakes. Every time that we've failed, every time uh, that we think that we've missed it, you know, it's, it's not uh, an opportunity for us to say, this thing doesn't work. It's an opportunity for us to, to turn back to him and, 
go back and ask him to lead us again. No, he's just leading us. There is a, there is a path he's leading us onto the kingdom to, to receive more and more and to finally reach that place. Um, so he can restore even the things that you've lost, especially time. God can restore it. The mistakes that, we've, uh, that we think we've made and that, that, that we've wasted in our life, God can restore that. And he makes all things new. That's, that's who he is. He is the great redeemer. And so he is able to even correct or, or, or make good out of your mistakes. God is able to turn things around. Uh, and so uh, that is what we depend on. That is what we depend on. God is able to lead us. So th this, uh, uh, this is the, the, just the first uh, section of it. And uh, we're going to look at some specific instructions uh, in the second half uh, of this, uh, uh, this message. Um, you know. So there's, uh, we, we're going to talk about staying on the side of caution and taking risks in faith. Everyone doing okay as of now? Yeah, you still with me? Or point number five is dreams and visions. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, uh, let's look at this. The side of, uh, staying on the side of caution versus taking risks in faith. Romans 11, uh, verse 33 and 34. It says, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor? So God's wisdom is infinite. It's beyond comprehension. You know, we can't put God in a box. Uh, you know, the, when we look at our mistakes and, and see that the, the road has ended for us, God is someone who can, in his wisdom, order things, uh, you know, correctly for the end. Because he knows the end from the beginning. And when we take decisions that are based out of risk, there are um, reasons or there, there are uh, opportunities to, to make mistakes. However, the Lord is still calling us sometimes to, to take risks. You know, our life is a, is a life of faith. There are risks that we have to take uh, on the way. And just like Abraham uh, did, um, it says in Hebrews 11, 8, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. So that's a risk. Some of us are in that place. We don't know. The next step, we don't know where we are going. We just know that God is leading us to, some, uh, to a place that he's told us to, like Abraham. And we, and we have to go. We have to uh, take the step that is in front of us. Uh, some of us are, are there. Um, and there are certain decisions that we have to do where we have to be cautious. Um, and we step out only when we, uh, we have enough information. And so as we journey through God, we must learn to hear from God about which way he is leading us. Is, it, uh, is this circumstance calling for risk or is this circumstance calling for the side of caution? And, and uh, that takes wisdom, uh, the wisdom to know when to do what. Uh, but the beautiful thing is that every step, uh, as we take every step, God begins to speak and he begins to guide he begins to order us uh, in the ways the steps of the of a good man are ordered by the lord and proverbs uh, 4:18 it says but the the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day which means it it could be dark now but as you take more and more steps towards your destination Things be, begin to be clearer. God makes things clearer as you uh, ta start taking steps uh, towards 
uh, what he has called us to. Um, and sometimes we need to stay with the last instruction. So this is something that, uh, you know, as we journey uh, with God, you know, we can experience times when God is not speaking. You know, it's, it's, uh, you feel like God is not saying anything new, anything different. And that's because he just wants you to be faithful to what he's already said. He just wants you to continue, keep doing what he's already told you to do. So stay with the last instruction. Look at 1 Corinthians 4, verses 1 and 2. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, moreover uh, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. So the righteous live by faith. You know, we, we walk in faith and we walk stewarding what God has given us. Uh, Sometimes we don't understand why. Why is this, this, uh, this step required? And sometimes we need to know that this step is probably not even for me. It's probably not even for my children. Maybe it's for my children's children's children. And the Lord can use you in that way. You know, there were... Um, uh, if you look at that incident where it says Abraham tithed to Melchizedek, man, you, you remember that, uh, uh, that portion? Abraham tithed to, to Melchizedek. Yeah? You know, there's a later reference that is made that Levi tithed to Melchizedek because he was in Abraham. The, the decision that Abraham made to, to tithe to Melchizedek also affected his children and his children's children. Maybe the, the decision that you're going to make is going to affect a generation that you're yet to see. Maybe it's, it's going to affect the city uh, for a time that you are not present in. And even for our nation. You know, maybe the, the ripple effect of what you do, the decisions you make, the obedience that, uh, uh, that you were faithful in. Maybe that is what God uses for this nation. And so stay with the last instruction that keep doing what he's told you to do. Steward the thing that he's given you. Steward that vision and, and, and take that forward. Stay faithful with, with what God has assigned to you and keep growing in it. Um, and looking at this one, avoid being self-driven and, and stubborn. So Proverbs 14 and verse 12, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. And, and one of the biggest challenges uh, to receiving uh, God's guidance is that we may be pursuing goals uh, that are arising out of our flesh, out of self-driven motives. Uh, and, and these goals can, can look very, uh, very noble. You know, uh, maybe uh, you know, I'm pursuing to be a Bible teacher. It looks very noble. But is it because... I want to be known as a great Bible teacher? Is it because I, I want to be great? So the, the motive behind everything that, that even looks noble needs to be looked at. And, and we gotta be we gotta avoid being self-driven. Uh, because anything that's motivated by self does not glorify God. And also uh, we gotta avoid being stubborn. When we're stubborn, um, we have an attitude that I want it my way and no other way. Uh, you know, stubbornness can be good uh, for the right things, uh, but we're talking about the, the wrong kind of stubborn, stubbornness, the bad kind of stubbornness. You know, and how many understand the, the same person 
uh, who's stubborn for, for good things can also be stubborn for bad things, right? It can come out of the same person. Uh, and, and we're talking about things that are birthed in spiritual pride. When you're stubborn, when you uh, refuse to, to consider uh, godly counsel or consider that you could be wrong, uh, consider uh, another way, an another message uh, from the Lord when you're not willing to consider. Uh, it can be because of spiritual pride. It's getting awfully quiet in here. Let me encourage myself. It's a good point, Benny. Just, just keep going. <laughs> So consider that you could be wrong. And, and there's another, another word of caution here uh, uh, that we've got to avoid being aimless. Um, uh, you know, a lot of times when we talk about um, surrender and yielding, it, uh, it gets used in a, in a different way. Um, like, you know, I don't, I don't need to do anything. God will do everything for me. And we stay put, doing nothing. So surrender does not mean doing nothing. It does not mean being aimless, you know, leading a purposeless life. But it is a time for preparation uh, for everything that we need. And so our approach must be to seek the guidance uh, that the Lord is giving us, and, and then, then work hard. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's good to plan, it's, it's good to strategize uh, when, you, when you know that God is leading you uh, in, in a particular direction. Uh, and even if it's, if it's for your family to, to take care of your household and, and things like that, it's good to plan, it's good to prioritize. The, the Lord said that, um, you know, the one who takes care of his family is, um, you know, is... is Commended by him. So avoid being aimless. And, and, and look at uh, how we can steward what God is giving us. And uh, walking faithfully uh, to, to what, what uh, he has committed us to. Look at uh, Proverbs 16 verse 3 and verse 9. Commit your ways to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. A man's heart plans his way. But the Lord directs his steps. So, you know, when, when we have a re renewed mind and we, uh, you know, place our motives before the Lord uh, and we walk in that, we know that the Lord is guiding us. Uh, you know, it, it's okay to, to work towards it, to plan towards it, be prepared, get ready for what uh, uh, will come our way as we uh, determine to walk in the, in, the, in, the, in the ways that God has called us to. And avoid distractions. You know, as I said in the uh, beginning, uh, when we focus, you know, you're able to, to hear clearly and you're able to follow uh, as you continue in your steps. Uh, so, so avoid distractions because there are so many around us. There's the noise of the world, the, the, the noise of things that people want us to do for, uh, you know, their, their goals and their uh, needs. There's, there's a time to, to drown those things out and focus uh, on what the Lord is telling us. And so when our focus is broken, we, we tend to, uh, to waste time. So it's important for us to continue to, to, to renew our focus. Keep looking at what the Lord is telling us, what the Lord has told us. And, and, and um, as, as we take every step forward, we look at what uh, he is guiding us uh, into. Um, Genesis 24 and verse 27, uh, it says, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy and his truth towards my master. As for me, being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Being on the way. God is calling us to be action-oriented people. And this is the, the story of uh, uh, the Abraham's servant, Eliezer, who was uh, looking for a bride for Rebekah. And he, he says, as I was going on the way, he did not waste time. 
know, he prayed, but he did not park his camel. He didn't put it on handbrake mode. You know, he, he was going on the way. He knew that God will speak to him. He knew that God will guide him as he goes. And uh, uh, he didn't just pray. He didn't just, uh, you know, do nothing and sit, sit there. He said, as I go, as I go on my way, the Lord will direct me. This is the confidence that we need to, to walk in. Uh, and, and God is looking for this action orientation in us. Uh, you know, when we wait on God, the waiting is not in action. The waiting is a very, very active waiting. Um, there, is, there is a scene in heaven, in, in, in Isaiah 6. It's a scene of worship. You know, Isaiah uh, uh, comes up to the throne room and he sees God seated on his throne. And Isaiah, um, uh, you know, realizes that he needs to worship God and, and he's uh, thinking about that. He doesn't tell, you know, this is, uh, don't tell me anything. Just let me worship God. You know, he's open to whatever direction the Lord was giving at that time. And in that moment, in that scene, the throne room scene, the Lord says, who will go for me? And Isaiah says, here I am, send me. And God is looking for these action-oriented people. He's looking for people who, whom he can send on the earth, who's, whom he can send into our city, whom he can send to your friend, to your relative. And so God is a God who leads his people. And he's looking for people who, who will be led. Action-oriented people. So as we close, uh, the a final closing thought is that we need to avoid dwelling in the past and we need to look ahead. Philippians 3 was... Uh, 13 to 14. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And so there will, there will be challenging things that we experience in our lives. You know, Things that uh, we may be ashamed of, the mistakes that we've made on the way. But we take this encouragement that, that comes to us, that we press on, we look forward. You know, it's very difficult to drive if you're always looking at the rear view mirror. Very difficult. We look forward, forgetting those things that are behind. Uh, it could be your victories, it could be your failures, but if it's holding you back, uh, it's not a good thing. We press on towards the goal. We, we, we go ahead to where God is leading us. Uh, and so we can't live in the glories of the past uh, or even in the mistakes and failures uh, of our past. The, the finish line is ahead of us. So we press on. There's, there's so much more to go on. Amen? Let's just take some time to, to respond to this. Um, let's all rise to our feet. I call the worship team up. We looked at various insights of how God is speaking to us, how God is leading us. We looked at how he is someone who wishes to lead us. If you're here this morning thinking that you know, I've, I've messed up on the way. God had told me certain things to do, but uh, 
I didn't do that. Or maybe I did them wrong. If you're here this morning, um, you know, with that thought, I want to encourage you. God is bigger than your mistakes. And he's able to to take you from strength to strength and from glory to glory. He is the great redeemer. Just take some time to pray. Um, just seek even at this moment you know the lord may be telling you things he may be confirming things that he's already told you or he could be giving you new direction just take this time you know this is the most important time of the service as you receive what god is telling you So it's not just the word that he gives you he also gives you the power the grace to carry out that word and as you're standing this morning and 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 speaking to him just ask him if there's anything that he's confirming reiterating to you Let the weight of your glory, let 
like there's someone here who's uh, grown up listening to Psalms 23 um, but you walked away uh, or, or you, you've never really given your heart to the Lord who's that is that is there someone here like that you, you grew up in, in, in instruction you, you've, li- you've heard Psalms like Psalms 23 and, and and uh, was taught to you but uh, you never really gave your heart to the Lord are you here this morning if you're watching us uh, live or uh, or if you're shy to yeah there, I see someone there But you have received the Lord. I'm talking about someone who's not received the Lord. You grew up uh, hearing these psalms, but you haven't received the Lord. Uh, If you're here this morning, please, uh, and you're feeling shy, please meet me after the service. Um, If there's anyone else here, uh, you know, as you leave this place, if you feel like uh, you don't want to leave before you get things right before God, um, I encourage you to just uh, raise your hand and I want to pray with you. You know, the, the Lord says in, uh, in Revelation 3.20 uh, that, Behold, I, I stand at the door and knock. Uh, if you open the door, I'll come in and uh, I'll, I'll eat with you. I'll meet with you. I'll eat with you. The Lord wishes to meet with you. And if you... And if you're here, uh, looking at, you know, the, the ways that God is, has, is speaks, the, the, way, the ways God speaks to us, and you would like him to, to enter in, can I request you to raise your hand and I, I'd like to pray with you. Anyone? I, I can't see it the, the back, yeah? Just pray this prayer with me. Anyone else? Any, any other hands? No, you don't want to leave this place before you get things right before him. With God. Any other hands? Yeah. Just pray this prayer with me. Father, I come back. I thank you for calling me, for saving me. I recognize that I have sinned before you, but I return to you. Lead me in the everlasting way and make me a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Those who've uh, raised your hands, uh, if you could just keep your hands up for a minute, uh, I'd request the ushers to uh, to give you um, the the red bag, which has got some instructions in it. Um, and if you could meet with one of us, uh, we'd like to give you some instructions just to um, you know take go forward in your relationship with the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. There's one hand there. Now this is an awesome time. You know, this is uh, the Lord speaking to us. If any, anyone feels that uh, he hasn't spoken to us, remember, he's the one who called us to him. He's the one who, who will continue to lead us onto our salvation, the God of our salvation. And... Uh, as you've uh, you know, thought about things that the Lord is telling you, the Lord is leading you to, uh, let's just pray and then seal that 
the lord gives you every the, the step for every the, the light for every step of your way amen let's just pray for that uh, uh, just put your hand on your heart and let's just pray for this father i thank you for your people and i declare oh god that the the instruction that you've given them this morning oh god it stays within them it continues to lead them it continues to guide them it continues to encourage them oh god as they walk through this journey thank you god that you are the one who leads them to salvation you're the one who who takes them from strength to strength and from glory to glory hello i bless your people and give them uh, declare the, the grace that you give them oh god thank you thank you lord that you are the great shepherd the one who leads them and you are the great redeemer the one who is able to redeem from every mistake from every failure we thank you oh god for this we love you oh god let's close the grace of the lord jesus the love of god the father and the sweet fellowship of his holy spirit rest and abide with you now and forever in jesus name amen amen we trust that this message was a blessing to you we would love to hear from you you can email us at contact@apcwo.org also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources thank you for listening and god bless you